in order to know what love is, we have to find out what love is not. The only one that stays is what love really is. Hello and welcome to Ultimate Health Podcast, episode 282. Jesse Chapp is here with Marty Wasserman, and we are here each and every week to take your health to the next level. Each week, we will bring you inspiring and informative conversations about health and wellness, covering topics of nutrition, lifestyle, fitness, mindset, and so much more. And this week's featured guest is Don Miguel Ruiz. He's an international best-selling author of a series of books, including The Four Agreements. This book appeared on the New York Times bestseller list for nearly 10 years. He's dedicated his life to sharing the wisdom of the ancient Toltec through his books, lectures, and journeys to sacred sites around the world. Today, we're discussing Miguel's latest book, The Three Questions. And we're just so honored to have him on the show. We've had his sons on the show sharing amazing messages. And of course, Don Miguel Ruiz didn't disappoint. He has been a big part of my life for many years. I've been collecting his books, implementing his lessons and teachings, and I'm just so thrilled to have him on the podcast. So here's what we get into today. We talk about what the three questions are, physical fear versus irrational fear, stop believing in your thoughts, learn to listen and be skeptical, and what triggered Miguel's curiosity to study the human mind. So excited for you guys to hear this episode. Here we go with Don Miguel Ruiz. Hi, Miguel. How are you? Welcome to the show. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you for this interview. We're so excited to chat with you. And we're going to get into your new book, The Three Questions. But before we do that, since this is the first time we have you on the show, I want to go back and get into your story a little bit and talk about how before you got into the self-help realm, you attended medical school, you became a surgeon, you practiced medicine for several years with your brothers. What did this experience teach you? Well, you know, everything is about life. And life is changing all the time. Then just to become a medical doctor, it was an effort, but it was great because I enjoyed that challenge. I practiced, like you say, for several years until I find that it was not enough because I really wanted to understand how the human mind works. And because of that, I let go of the medical practice and I returned to my mother, who was my best teacher, I can say. And I started learning from her, an ancient tradition from Mexico, which is the Toltec knowledge. In that way, I started going more deeply into how the mind works. Because I practiced with my apprentices like around 10 years until the way that the human mind works, it was so clear for me. Because before that, I find it very complicated because I didn't really understand why humans are the way we are. But right now, after all those years of study with my apprentices, it resolved with the creation of my very first book, The Four Agreements, which really is a, more a psychology book, but is without names, without this kind of practice, but with just common sense. And I reduce everything in just four agreements, for agreements that really can change everybody's life if they apply it. Anyway, this is how was the transition for being a a medical doctor to really understand the logic of the mind. And you mentioned as you're practicing medicine, you became interested in the mind. What triggered that curiosity? Well, for many years, I used to believe exactly who I am and what I am. And of course, I used to say, well, I am my body. But I have an an accident when I was like around 22, 23 years old, something like that. But in that accident, I see my body is sleeping on a wheel and my car crashed with a concrete wall. But I, I see myself sleeping. Then the question was, if I'm not my body, then who am I or what am I? And I have so many questions and very little answers. Then after time, when I went back to my mother to learn from her, I tried to repeat the same experience, but without the accident. And it took me me some time, but finally it was possible to see my body from another perspective outside of my body. 
when that happened, I was completely sure that I am not my body. And everything starts shifting. But still, there were so many doubts because I did to really understand. I've been very skeptical my whole life. And I hardly believe what people say, what religion says, what teacher says, then I have to find it by myself. Then my mother was a big help because I find a lot of answers through her. And you mentioned working with the shaman as well. Was this in Mexico? Oh, yes. Uh, when I was doing my social service, I worked with a shaman for almost a year to tell that I was doing the social service. But really was uh, the work with my mother what make the big difference in my life. Okay. And when did you end up moving to the U.S.? And what was that transition like? Well, I moved to the United States in the 80s. And the reason was because I wanted to spend more time with my mother. That's when I decided not to be a medical doctor anymore. And of course, I have all those opinions around me that why should I let go of something that I Work so hard to get it, and what I gonna do if I'm not a medical doctor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it wasn't really that important for me, because my curiosity was even bigger. I really want to understand why we are the way we are. It was fascinating to find all those answers, until, at least for me, it was so clear why we are the way we are. And you were talking about how you had to find out things for yourself, that only you can figure that out. And this brings up the first question in your new book, The Three Questions, which is, who am I? And just so I can address the three questions for people who are listening, the questions are, who am I? What is real? What is love? So since you were just already talking about you had to figure things out for yourself, who am I? Expand on that. What is this question all about? Well, like I said before, I used to believe exactly what I am and who I am. And I apply everything of the story of my life to justify my existence. And I remember one day I went to visit my grandfather, which is uh, my mother's teacher. And I want to impress him because at that time, my personal importance was a little big. I tried to, to my grandfather to see that I was not a child anymore. Then in that conversation, I bring everything that I knew at that time. And I talk about poverty, politics, religion, and he was just listening, whatever I'm saying, until I discovered a little smile in his face. Then I knew that I was in a problem. And sure enough, I tried to escape as soon as possible, but he started to say, no, now it's my turn. And he said, well, everything that you told me is very interesting, but is that really yours? Because I hear your teachers speaking through your voice, and it's not really what you believe. It's not you. And he said, I'm sure that you don't even know who you are or what you are. And I tried to defend myself right away, and I start telling him everything that I believe I am. And keep talking and talking, and until the end, I have nothing else to say. He say, well, you are very good, Miguel. You can convince almost anybody about everything that you're saying, but you know that you have no idea what you are. You only justify your existence. You only project an image that you want me to believe that this is what you are. But in reality, you have no idea what you are. You tell me that your name is Miguel Ruiz. Well, you don't even choose your name. Your parents choose that name for you. And they repeat it so many times that you agree with them. And then you respond and you become Miguel Ruiz. And everybody is telling you that what you are, what you believe, the way you behave, etc. And you agree with everybody. And you create that big image about yourself which is not real at all. They say, Miguel, the dog doesn't know that it's a dog or the cat doesn't know that it's a cat. They are dogs or cats because we call them that way, but they have no idea. And honestly, they don't care. They just exist. Then why we have to tell to ourselves that we are humans and be so upset if we are not what we believe we are? Then it's obvious that you have no idea what you are but you are, 
you are alive and you are here. He said, the day will come that you will find out that all that knowledge is not even real. Which, of course, takes us to the second question. What is real? Now we're going to take a quick break from our chat with Miguel to give a shout out to our show partner, Organifi. Organifi has these little ready-to-go packs called Pure, and they're for gut and brain health. And you can certainly bring them with you on the go, or you can use them first thing in the morning, during a workout, or just midday when you need a little bit of a boost. And I was a little bit nervous trying them, thinking they'd be too sweet, and they actually have such a nice, balanced flavor. They're definitely not too sweet, and they definitely make you feel really hydrated. So if you haven't given them a try yet, you want to try them because they're going to benefit your gut and your brain. They've got some superfoods in there like lion's mane, baobab, and aloe vera, and I'm super excited about them, especially we're here in Florida right now. It's hot, and it's so nice to have something so hydrating to bring with us on the go. And I'm super excited about the discount you get as a listener of our show, 20% off. And to take advantage, it's really easy to do. Just go to ultimahealthpodcast.com slash Organifi. Again, that URL is ultimahealthpodcast.com slash Organifi. So go ahead and get yourself some Organifi Pure today and take your gut and brain health to the next level. And now a shout out from other show partner, Perfect Keto. And Perfect Keto has some new bars in town. They are lemon poppy and salted caramel, and they are delicious. Jesse and I are so excited to have another option for when we're on the go. And lately what we've been doing is putting them in the freezer and then taking them with us to the beach or where we're taking Goji to swim. It's super fun to have a cold, high-protein, high-fat snack on the go, and the taste is amazing. So get your hands on the lemon poppy and the salted caramel. And while you're at it, also get the almond butter brownie. So have a collection of these bars on hand for a quick, delicious snack. As a listener of our show, you get 20% off your first order of Perfect Keto. To take advantage, go to ultimahealthpodcast.com slash perfectketo. Again, that URL is ultimahealthpodcast.com slash perfectketo. These products ship worldwide, free shipping in the US. Go and get yourself a whole variety of these bars and have them on rotation. They make an amazing snack. And now back to our chat with Miguel. And you talk about in the book how you know what is real when you accept what is not real. So explain that whole concept. Well, first let's go for what I am. I know what I am when I find out what I am not. Then I am not everything I tell to everybody and everything I tell to myself that I am. Because the truth is that I have no idea what I am, but I am. Once I accept that, then pieces start coming into my mind. And of course, we see the whole reality that we create and the reality that exists even before we was born. The reality that we think is real. What we don't understand is that that reality is shifting all the time because your reality is completely different when you were 10 years old than when you are 13 or 14 years old because the whole world changed for you. When you grow up, when you have your first child, the entire world changed for you, it's not the same. And actually, every day is a different reality, a different world that is shifting, is changing all the time. When we see what is not real, the only thing that stays is what it is real. Then we need to accept that reality the way it is, and we get even more peace in our mind. It's much easier to relate with ourselves and to relate with everybody around us is extremely simple, but that really can change everything about ourselves, everything that we believe. And the last question, the third one is, well, what is love? That is very fundamental. And the same thing, in order to know what love is, we have to find out what love is not. Because every time that we take everything that love is not, the only one that stays is what love really is. Anyway, when we was born, we had no knowledge, but we knew love without any description, without any justification, because this is our nature. That's what we really are. We are a manifestation of love itself, which is life. By the way, when we grow up, we learn from our society the way they love. 
what they say that love is. We see how our parents love each other, our brothers and sisters, our relatives, or friends, or teachers, and we create a whole image about what love is. And this is exactly the main problem that we humans have, because we love the way we learn, which is with conditions. I love you if you let me control you. You love me if I let you control me. And this is what we see whenever we turn our face and see everybody. They love each other with conditions. And that's the reason why they try to control, to have control over everything that they love. And in the book, you talk about how conditions actually corrupt love. Exactly. Because conditional love is exactly the opposite of real love. So we want to be able to have unconditional love, which is the ultimate goal. But first, we need to start with unconditional love for ourselves. So what does that look like? Well, we need to unlearn to love the way we learn to love, which is with conditions. But we have to start with ourselves because that was the main problem that we have. It's okay that we love everybody else with conditions and that everybody loves us with conditions. But then we love ourselves also with conditions. And that is what creates the entire drama in our mind. I love myself if I can become the way I suppose I should be the way my parents want me to be, the way my beloved want me to be, the way my friends want me to be, the way society want me to be. But we are not that. Then when we love ourselves with that condition, that means that we accept ourselves just the way we are. And we don't have to pretend any longer. And once that we accept ourselves the way we are, automatically we respect ourselves in every single direction. And when we respect and love ourselves that way, we also can love and respect everybody else the same way. You know how wonderful is that? Just imagine that humanity can love each other with our conditions, that we don't have to protect ourselves because somebody tried to control us and tell us what to do, when to do, how to do it. And the other thing that gets in the way is fear. We have all these barriers that we create and impose on ourselves. And I know in the book you talk about physical fear versus irrational fear. Let's discuss where fears come in and act as a barrier for love. Well, fear is completely natural. Fear is like pain for the body. When you have pain in the body, you know something is wrong with your body. When you have fear, you know something is wrong with your mind. We need it as a guidance. Well, yes, because fear can save your life. But real fear, you see, uh, let's see, an earthquake, you will be afraid right away. You need to survive. But if there is no earthquake and you're afraid of earthquake, now it's irrational fear. They create phobias, irrational fears. And that really create a big trauma in our life. And this is just a little example. But it's all around. We make a lot of assumptions that this can be dangerous. And we are afraid of so many little things when it's not really that important. And that's essentially the core of anxiety. Yes, it's the irrational fear will create all those big problems. Because when the truth arrives, all those fears just disappear. The only fear that stays is the normal fear, the one that is in your instinct, the one that you welcome, because that's telling you that something is wrong, that something is not that good. And of course, the irrational fear will create all those problems the way we love, because now we are afraid to love. We are afraid to open our heart, to be vulnerable, when there is no reason for all of that. Well, a big part of your new book talks about the voice in our head and silencing that. And this is what we're talking about, irrational fear, this thought in our head. 
And you talk about in the book how it's important to stop believing our thoughts, and this is actually going to turn the mind silent. So explain how that works. Well, do you see that movie, The Beautiful Mind? Yes. Great movie. A long time ago, yes. Yeah. Do you see how these guys see three people that doesn't exist? Yeah. And talk to this guy a lot all the time. And for him, they was real. And that created a big problem until he discovered that they were not real. He started taking medicine and it didn't work for him until he decided not to pay attention to these people. In the beginning, it was a little difficult until finally they don't even try to talk to him any longer. But they were there all the time. They didn't disappear, but he knew the difference. Perhaps we don't see those people, but we hear voices. And we believe that those voices are real. And we obey those voices, and they control our lives, all those voices. Well, those voices come really from fear, and they are not real. Even we hear those voices with different tonality. Sometimes sometimes it's, it's like our father is speaking to us, or our mother, or the teacher, or our beloved. Even we can almost hear them, but there's not real. We can even make it sound like Kermit the Frog if we want. Exactly. Now we're going to take another quick break from our chat with Miguel to give a shout out to our show partner, Sun Warrior. If you've been listening to the show for a while, you know that Jesse and I are big fans of the Warrior Blend Vanilla. In fact, so much so that we brought a tub of it down with us to Florida, and it's been the base of our smoothie bowls that I've been making quite a few times since we've been here. And what I'm adding to it is strawberries, papaya, coconut milk, broccoli sprouts, and they are so good, especially with that boost of protein in there. So if you haven't tried the Warrior Blend, get your hands on it. It comes in chocolate, plain, and vanilla. We're big fans of the vanilla, and add it to your next smoothie. And as a listener of our show, you get 20% off all your Sun Warrior purchases and free shipping if you spend $50 or more. To take advantage of this incredible offer, all you need to do is go to ultimahealthpodcast.com slash sunwarrior. Again, that URL is ultimahealthpodcast.com slash sunwarrior. Order yourself some Warrior Blend today and give that next smoothie a boost. And now back to our chat with Miguel. So it seems like a pretty simple concept to not believe the thoughts, but how do we go about starting to practice this? Well, like I said a little before, we need to unlearn because we practice for so long what we believe we are. We practice for so long what we believe is real. And we practice for so long what we think is love, that that becomes automatic then it's a challenge to unlearn all those three concepts. But the benefit is very obvious. We let go all those fear. We accept ourselves just the way we are. We don't need to justify it any longer. And it's no longer important the opinion that anybody have about us because we know that they have exactly the same problem for many years, they practice all of that. Then why we have to even believe or listen in what they say? We understand it is okay, but we keep going. And the same thing with reality. It's changing all the time anyway. Then what is really real? If it's instead of go against the current of a reality, we write with that reality, we have the sensation that we may have certain control of the way we live our life. But in order to do that, we need to let go all the resistance. We don't need it because it's not even real. And exactly the same thing with love. You know, if you just can accept your beloved the way he or she is, everything will change completely. But it doesn't mean that your beloved will accept you the way you are. But this is not your problem. It's your beloved problem or your parents' problem or your children' problem or anybody else's problem. It's not your problem. Your problem is just yourself because you're the priority in your life. Because without you, 
nothing else really exists for you. So are there any specific tools or things people can do to unlearn this? Like does journaling work or meditation or is it just knowing it and practicing it over and over? Well, it's important with the fifth agreement. I don't know if you know it. We do, yes. Learn to listen. To be skeptical is not a, a social position to live in. That we are so important that we don't believe whatever anybody says. No, it's just pure common sense. Be skeptical, which means don't believe it, because you know that whoever said whatever they say is only true for that person, not for anybody else. And it comes from the way they learn in their life. They come from their knowledge for what they believe. But if we respect what they say, what they do, it's okay. You don't have to argue. It's meaningless. You just allow them to be whatever they are. You don't need to control them. You don't need to tell them the way they should be or the way they should think, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No, you just respect them. Then you are skeptical. You don't believe it, but you listen what they say. Then to be skeptical, we can say is, don't believe me. Don't believe anybody else, but mainly don't believe yourself. But listen, because in between all those lies or whatever, they all come. The precious thing that can change your life come there. Then if you listen and you adapt it in the way you believe, in the way you think, you can see how your life is changing so beautifully. Your whole reality is changing. And it's kind of effortless. But the problem is that we resist because we practice it for so long. Then this fifth agreement is the answer of that question. This is how we let go all those lies and replace it with just common sense. It's not against be have knowledge, but it's about be wise because wisdom is not the same that knowledge with wisdom you become the way you used to be when you was a child when you was innocent but you are not like a child because now you know but you are wise that you don't believe it but you listen i want to pivot the conversation here a little bit and talk about the concept of me and we say things in life like this is important to me are you listening to me and in the book, you talk about how me doesn't refer to anything real. So what do you mean by this? Well, it's easy to understand, possibly. You know, me is your own creation. It's the image that you present about yourself. It's the way that you wish that everybody sees you. It's the way that you wish that you can see yourself, but it's not real. Then the whole story of your life is based in me. How I feel, how I believe how I perceive is all about me. And there's nothing wrong with that. If we understand that me is not real, but it's just a projection of what is real, then everything changes. Because it's me the one who wants to understand. It's me the one who wants to learn or unlearn. It's me the one who's looking for God looking for the truth. But when finally you find out that you are not me, then everything changed completely and never will be the same like before. For example, Siddhartha, he was a prince and he wanted to know the truth. But Siddhartha was me, of course. Then when he was in the body tree and he faced Mara, for the last time, Mara is the devil in the Christian tradition. Then Mara tried to seduce Siddhartha with everything that Mara knows, which means me trying to seduce itself with everything that it knows. But at a certain point, Siddhartha facing Mara say, you are not even real. And I put the earth as a witness that you are not real. But Mara had exactly the same face as Siddhartha. Then Mara was enraged. 
tried to even kill Siddhartha and send all those arrows, the army with arrows, but when he comes to Siddhartha, he becomes flowers because he didn't take anything personally anymore. He just don't believe all what they say about him. From that moment, he was no longer Siddhartha. He was Buddha. And the same thing with Jesus. He went to the desert and faced the snake, faced Satan. And by the way, Satan was me. He had the same face of Jesus. And exactly the same thing. Jesus let him know that he's not real. Me is not real. And when finally he defeated all that temptation, he was no longer Jesus. He was the Christ. Then it's something that it should happen to every single human. When you reach to that point, that you see that what you believe is you is not real. And you just accept that you exist, that you are life, that you are immortal. Everything changed completely. Because what is mortal is your physical body, which is matter. But you are the energy who moves that matter. And you are part of that phenomenon. And you create matter. You live in your body. And at a certain point, your body no longer can have you. When you leave your body, your body will dissolve. But your mind will dissolve as soon as your brain doesn't work. Which means me stop existing when the brain is not working. But you, you are eternal. And me is just your reflection. Totally makes sense. Well, thank you for that. And we want to be respectful of your time. But before we wrap up, we just have one final question to ask you. And that is, what does ultimate health mean to you? Ultimate health is what you really are, even without your body. You are the one who heals your body. You are the one who moves your body. And your body, just like any old car, it becomes sick and sooner or later will die. But it's just mental. It's just in the level of energy. And we have to accept our body with whatever disease our body has. Because our body, even when it's sick, is perfect. But mentally, we can always have health. So Miguel, the new book is The Three Questions. We definitely recommend our listeners get a copy of this. It's a fantastic read. But how else can they connect with you after the show? Well, if you go to my website, miguelreese.com, and you can see all the events that I have. That is not too many anymore. But you can see the events of my children creates, like uh, Don Jose and Don Miguel Reese Jr., that they're working all the time. And we just had Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. on the show. We had such a fabulous conversation with him. And we've had Don Jose on as well. So (laughs) lots of great content over here on the podcast. And you guys have so much content out there. And all your books are amazing. If you have not read The Four Agreements yet, you must get your hands on it. So thank you so much for being on the show. We're so grateful for your time and teaching us all this information. This was great, Miguel. Thank you so much. Thank you, you guys, for having me on your show. Have a great day. Bless to all of you. Bye-bye. Take care. We hope you enjoyed today's conversation with Don Miguel Ruiz. He is such a special soul. So make sure you go ahead and get a copy of The Three Questions. And while you're at it, get the classic book, The Four Agreements. You're going to want to have that one on your shelf. And if you love today's episode, let us know over on Instagram. Tag Don Miguel Ruiz and at Ultimate Health Podcast. And hopefully you're listening to this episode on our exclusive app. So whether you have an iPhone or an Android, you can get an exclusive app that just has our episodes right on your phone. So if you have an iPhone, go to ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash Apple app. And if you have an Android, go to ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash Android app and support us and keep listening. Yeah, the apps are free. They're amazing. Be sure and download the app to your device. For full show notes, be sure and head over to ultimatehealthpodcast.com slash 282. We're going to have links there to everything we discussed in a nice show summary. So be sure and check those out. And before we let you go, I want to give some love to our editor and engineer, Jay Sanderson over at podcasttech.com. Jay, thanks for doing such a great job putting the show together. And this week's fun fact about Jace is that he went bowling for the first time in a long time for Valentine's Day. Awesome, Jace. Hope you guys had fun. Have an awesome week. We'll talk soon. Take care.